Recently, I was in the middle of writing a script on the 10 most controversial quests in KOTOR. The game tackles some insanely spicy social issues, but before I could finish exploring the moral implications of droids being forced into unwanted relations. Please kill me. I don't think I ever felt so bad for a droid before. I had a terrible realization. I realized why Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic will probably never see a true remaster. And I can hear the community backlash already. Prejudice set to maximum. Ideally, of course, I hope I'm wrong, but I feel compelled to share my findings and create an open dialogue as we delve into the core reasons I believe, contrary to thousands of clickbait articles, KOTOR is unfortunately too much of a liability for Disney to remaster. Knights of the Old Republic, a lot of fans want to see that. Is there any development you know, of that? We talk about that all the time. Yes, we are developing something to look at. Right now, I have no idea where things might fall. Counter to my previous claim, president of Lucasfilm confirms that yes, the Old Republic movies and perhaps games are being ideated upon, maybe a TV series. And this is bolstered with Revan being confirmed in core canon in the Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker Visual Dictionary. But is that bad for a KOTOR remaster? Well, consider the following. The totally fan-made project titled Aperion was shut down by Disney, which fans had speculated this perhaps inferred that their own KOTOR remaster or remake was on its way. And there have also been several industry inside reports that there have been attempts internally, coupled with the fact that EA has finally allowed AAA single player titles to be made, notably Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and it being so successful it has garnered a sequel in production, all indicators point to a canon KOTOR, right? Well, possibly. However, there are so many elements in KOTOR that would break the universe in two seconds flat. And why, if Disney was looking to create its own KOTOR movie, would it not create KOTOR games to fit into a new canon story? They know there's a hungry audience who will eat up the Old Republic no matter what their version is. New sequel movies are basically a soft reboot of the original trilogy. Why not reap all the rewards by leveraging an already successful property like KOTOR versus the many steps they have created themselves like The Last Jedi. The answer? Movie promotion. If they create a movie around KOTOR, why not have an official KOTOR game to promote said movie? Just because it's Old Republic in no way means that Revan may be the protagonist, unfortunately. Prime example of a game being remixed into Disney's canon is Rogue One. While many praise its story for its originality, for longtime fans of the series, it's completely obvious it's just the story of dark forces pitched and tweaked for Disney. Gary Witter, a writer for Rogue One, literally was a PC game reviewer in the 90s who wrote about dark forces. Just swap out the lead, Kyle Katarn, for Jin Erso, who is a retooling of his original partner, Jan Oz. Literally a few letters different and packaged as a completely fresh idea to the majority of unknowing audiences. Now there are strong rumors that controversial choice Brie Larson is being eyed off to star in an Old Republic movie or TV series. And what's to say Bastila won't get her own headline series, or Mitra Surik, or even perhaps a female Revan? I know a lot of what I'm saying to longtime game fans is controversial, and I myself am not a fan of any of the above. So if you're like myself, then you would say, so why not just create KOTOR with better graphics, call it a remaster, easy and clean for a new generation and old to enjoy again? Well, they could do that. And it does seem relatively easy, but there's a catch. It probably wouldn't support any upcoming KOTOR media, and as there's two conflicting storylines, why would Disney want to confuse audiences? Two, KOTOR is really good. Would Disney want to be actively compared to the brilliant writing of KOTOR? Would they perhaps bristle at the idea of fans mentioning the previous game's benchmarks, comparing the writing of KOTOR to Disney's very own game? What if it falls short? How much backlash will they get? Is it worth the headache? Kathleen Kennedy also said that they were focusing on the Old Republic. Now that is a pretty big area in the timeline to cover. It doesn't mean just Revan. Perhaps instead they will decide to focus on the massively monetarily successful The Old Republic game storyline. 
why not bolster something that is doing so well for them and continuing to do so? You were deceived. And now your Republic shall fall. The numbers are actually staggering. In a 2019 earnings report, Electronic Arts, which owns Bioware, said that the MMO has earned nearly a billion dollars in its lifetime. One billion. Which, I mean, that's pretty good return on investment of its development, which ended up being close to 200 million. And the EA CFO Blake Jorgensen said on a call, believe it or not, we're close to 1 billion on Star Wars The Old Republic revenue from the start of its history. So it's a business that just keeps on going. We like those types of businesses. The key word is business, not game, not experience, business. Forget Revan. They all about that revenue. Fans such as myself have been doing 360s since the early 2010s when EA has taken over the Star Wars franchise. They've only put out basically Battlefront as a AAA title, then reluctantly to move away from multiplayer Jedi Fallen Order, whereas LucasArts back in its heyday was pumping out two-ish Star Wars games per year. Now I looked at the numbers and the KOTOR series was still extremely successful by its own merits. It earned $44 million by July 2006. I'm sure that it has experienced some pretty steady sales over the years, and it's invaluable in the fact it set up the story for the Old Republic MMO. Basically, it stood on its shoulders and it wouldn't exist without the KOTOR fanbase. But $50 million isn't exactly a cash cow versus the Old Republic, and no doubt a large reason fans will likely not see a true sequel either in KOTOR 3. Again, I could be wrong, KOTOR has been ported to different mobile devices over the years by smaller companies. All it would take would be an EA executive to greenlight a small studio to remaster the graphics, not touch anything else, repackage it, and make a mint as they release or announce some type of KOTOR movie series. However, this brings me to my final point, and although I deign to speak about anything political on this channel, I don't care what you believe as long as you're good to other people. My goal is to not judge people, just celebrate the best dark stories and lore in RPGs, period. But I would be remiss if I didn't at least mention that Disney may have painted themselves into a pretty tight corner when attempting to re-release KOTOR, and the reasons are manifold. According to a deluge of articles outlining consumer spend among millennials, consumers pay more for products from socially responsible companies, up to 66% more. In a nutshell, companies promoting socially responsible products or causes, which a lot of the time all it costs is one of their PR marketing people on Twitter to just tweet it, and they garner the goodwill of leveraging a social issue in vogue and are able to then generate up to a 60 66% boost in sales. It doesn't take a genius to realize why they want to execute order 66. However, it comes with a cost. Heightened scrutiny from the people that you're trying to sell to. Recently, Disney promoted Black Lives Matters on its Star Wars Twitter. Many pointed out that Disney has not remained congruent with the aforementioned BLM virtues, when fans pointed out John Boyega's disappearance from a Chinese Force Awakens poster. Now, I'm not trying to come from any type of moral authority, but basically, if you talk the talk, you better walk the walk, and that is the cost that they have to to pay because you will be under major scrutiny and the internet doesn't forget. In fact, it goes a step further now that everything is archived and tries to find flaws with a fine tooth comb. Now, while I am personally not a fan of cancel culture, especially as the whole story of KOTOR was of redemption, this leaves the original game of KOTOR open to scrutiny too. It seems like whatever piece of media that dares to make you question your own morality or play with murky themes and is embraced by the wider audience itself is scrutinized. Such as The Joker being number one at the box office, which spawned a flurry of seething articles with titles such as How the Joker Became a Victim of the White Male Rage It Depicts. 
Now, you may say, Dash, that's a bit far-fetched. Nobody's going to take one random gamer's opinion on Twitter and blow it out of proportion, but it doesn't even take the game's audience to cause a controversy. Vox wrote an article criticizing Solo for not being more pro on the inclusion of the quote-unquote woke droid. The rule of thumb seems to be if you tackle any questionably moral issue, or let's say woke, it has to be on the pro side. It has to support it and uplift it. Otherwise, you are deemed as evil or morally reprehensible, which Disney obviously would try and sidestep. Now, KOTOR, like great Star Wars writing, makes you think critically and challenges you. It tests your morality. It features its own sex droid quest on Dantooine, where you can either return the droid to its owner, much to the droid's dismay, or destroy it, and then lie to the woman about the events, cruelly sending her on a wild goose chase to search for her droid, perhaps for years, and put herself in harm's way. Now, that's like any great RPG. It gives the player agency and freedom of choice, and then trust the player is intelligent enough to take the lessons annexed into said decision, rather than beat you over the head Head with the writer's worldview. I don't know if that kind of nuance can take place in 2020 from Star Wars, let alone Disney. And it only takes one journalist to point out the comparison of slave Twi'leks to real life slavery, or the open xenophobia on Taurus, watching children beat on an Ithorian to death and say it glorifies harming minorities. Again, I hope I am wrong. This is just a game and a great RPG beloved by the community. I personally am subscribed to the KOTOR subreddit and I love the community's energy to this day. I'm the first to say that the game has earned its place as a cult classic, still spawning incredible memes nearly 20 years later. But the idea started to eat at me that maybe this game cannot be made today. Maybe it can or it's going to be changed and censored. It's kind of been eating at me and I wanted to flesh out the idea with you but this is the part where you guys join in. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below or my social media, which is linked. This is a conversation starter of a video and I will be making my KOTOL controversial quests video because the stories are insane when you put them into the real world context and some of the darkest in Star Wars and it's not even KOTOL 2, the one that's full of horror. Again, I wanna say I don't love bringing real world issues into my lore videos, but sometimes the two worlds do collide and I felt this was an exception to to evaluate what may happen if Disney does look at launching KOTOR again. But that's it for the video. Make sure to like and subscribe for more KOTOR content. It's still a joy to explore. And until next time, Traveler.